Hello and well met. This is Layron with the Fans Crowns Academy. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some material that I'm prepping for the upcoming adventure, the Shattered Obelisk that's coming out uh, later in September. So if you're interested in that adventure, I've done an article on it. I'm also um, doing some videos on some game prep. I've already done one video a couple days ago where I was actually working on some maps, importing those. And I got some material off the DM skill. This is Heroic Maps. Um, one of the viewers had mentioned that they wanted to see this a little up close. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. And essentially, you're getting... Uh, you know, four or five pages of tables and kind of like ideas, resources to kind of help you run the adventure, kind of make it unique. So if you've already ran the adventure, uh, these could be helpful for you to kind of inspire you to, to run something a little different. And then also um, you can take these tables and you can copy and paste them. And if you go through and you format them correctly, you can import them into Fantasy Grounds fairly, rel relatively easily. Um, I, I kind of cheated. I used a, um, AI to kind of sort it out for me so it's easier. But you can just use um, Notepad++ plus plus to basically to get the text out. Essentially, you're wanting to remove all of the... Um, extraneous punctuation symbols you know stuff that doesn't belong in the actual text for the tables and then you can go ahead and detail these in fantasy grounds so i'll show you what it looks like as a finished product and then i'll just kind of show you uh, what to look for so essentially i made a bunch of tables from that's just chapter one so if i go over to the tables over here on the right hand side um there are some tables that I made and first I made my own group. So this is heroic maps, LMOP chapter one. So lost mine defend over DM resources. So that's the name of the, the group. After I made the group, then I started building the table. So for instance, this first table here is the goblin attacker. So you can kind of give them personality. So this says as the players travel to Fandolin on their wagon, they find Gundren and Sildar's horses dead on the road and are ambushed by a small band of goblins from Kragmaw. To bring some detail and color to the ensuing fight and any subsequent interrogations, here are some suggestions of names and fighting styles for the goblins. So it kind of expands on what the adventure gives you. And I think that's part of the art of being a game master and a storyteller is just kind of taking the bare bones and, and being able to kind of uh, work it into your own magic into it. So like giving these guys names, giving them some kind of... Uh, you know, purpose, give them a personality. So that's the sort of thing that this is trying to do here. So basically what we would do is we can import this as a table so you can roll or you can pick or choose however you want to do it. But I think this is helpful um, in expanding an adventure that's already been ran before. And you have details in here that would certainly go along with that. So this is just a PDF that comes with the, the kit that I got on the DM Guild. So if you guys are interested, you can pick this up. It was on sale when I got it. I think it's around 30 bucks or so, but you basically get all four chapters. You get updated maps and you get tokens. So I think it was a really good deal. I mean, I could, and this is Heroic Maps. I haven't purchased any of their maps in a long time. But when I first started using Fantasy Grounds, I noticed that their maps are much higher quality than what you're getting from the Wizards of the Coast products. Because a lot of those are not made for virtual tabletop. Those are mostly made for uh, printing or for the inside of a book or something and you know playing around a table. This, this is kind of more focused on virtual tabletops and printing big tiles so that you can play on miniatures and stuff. So that's why I kind of like this product and basically um, the links will be in at the end of the video if you guys are interested in this but essentially Devon Knight supplied the tokens and the maps were created by Heroic Maps. So I'll just give you an example of one of the maps that I had worked on in Fantasy Grounds and one of the tables. So for example this thing for the Goblin Ambushers, I actually created a table for it. 
So if you wanted to roll randomly to, to choose a personality, because there's three that are the archers, and then there's three that are melee fighters. So we can roll twice if we want. So if I roll, I got a six, so that's going to be this guy. Uh, he's quick and accurate with his short bow. Uh, he sings a rude goblin attack song and wears a black woolen cap with a peacock feather. Now, obviously, you can do all this yourself, but this is just a, a really nice, handy way to uh, bring in some content without you having to use all your creative time for that. And then I labeled the, the thing as it was in the PDF and gave it a description. And then on the back, I put the notes in here so that when you play the adventure, you have a little bit of context. And then up here... When you edit these tables, you can actually put some notes here. So this gives you an idea what the table's for, just in case. So those are just some things that I put into Fantasy Grounds from the PDF. So if I go back over to the tables again, uh, what I had done is essentially made sure that I have this labeled and grouped. That's an important aspect of creating your own content. When you make custom content or edits or changes, I recommend that you make a group and you do that by using the drop down menu. Click the plus and it will add a new category. So, what I'll do is go ahead and make one right now and it's called group one by default. But what I'm going to do is copy and paste this previous link because I will be doing chapter two eventually. And then I'll just paste it into this, this new one called group. It, it was called group one. And then I'll change this to chapter two. So that'll be the new chapter uh, when I get around to converting it. So I'm going to do a chapter at a time, essentially. So this is the DM resources for chapter one. And that's what came, comes out of this PDF. There's three other chapters to do. So I'm just going to focus on one chapter at a time. That way I don't get overwhelmed. But it is better if you do it all at once. So in other words, it's better if you do all the tables, all the tokens, all the maps. But I'm going to do it in stages because I don't know how far along I want to get. And it's not a commercial product. I'm doing it for myself. However, I am doing this conversion for a paid game that I'm going to run on Start Playing. So I got that listed, and I'm going to charge $15 a session. And I'm going to go the whole nine yards with the music and, uh, you know, Sirenscape and nice-looking tokens and good-looking maps. So I'm going to go all out. And, and that's one of the things that reasons why I'm doing this. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of time. So generally, what I'm going to be doing is updating the uh, content. And then when the module comes out, I'm going to reassociate the locations and link in all of the content that I've created for it. So I'm going to create this as a separate module that I can load in whenever I want. And then I'll use those maps and the assets for my adventures. That way it's not going to be um, just the generic stuff that they supply. They are updating the Lost Mine of Fendelver. And I think I read that they're going to add a map for the Goblin Ambush for the uh, official release. I don't remember to quote beyond that, but that was one thing I'd wondered is if they're going to bring in a map for the first encounter because the original adventure doesn't have one. So the community and everyone that's played it just about has used a map and they didn't want to use Theater of the Mind, especially for a new group when they haven't ever played before. They might need that visual cue initially um, and then start doing more Theater of the Mind or, or uh, you know, kind of cinematic play. So these are all the tables that came from Chapter 1. Now, whether you use these or not, it's another story. So I'm going to be looking at these, and some of them I might link together depending on what they do. So there's one that has uh, some sayings from Sildar. So when you roll the table, uh, let's see, in this one, it says, by Griffin's Talon. So, he, you know, it's got like little little sayings that he might he might actually, you know, put out there. So that, that that's useful. That's That's really cool. Especially if you're kind of new to D and D or role playing games, and you're not so up on or don't have time to embellish on the stuff, this is a good way to do that. So those are the tables. So I want to go over to the maps and show you what those look like. So I've only done the line of sight and the occluders and such on one of four images, I believe. So if I go to the images, and I'm gonna, again, I filtered it down to heroic maps, chapter one for Lost Mine of Fandelver. And I did the actual, the most difficult map, which is the Kragma hideout. 
So what they give you is a map like this. So what I had done with this map is um, I had put the assets on there, these little like moving trees, which are part of the Fantasy Grounds art subscription. So I basically just overlaid and put a transparency on some moving bushes and here's some falling leaves. And then I put the water effect on the river. And then down below in the south, I believe, I, yeah, I got some birds down here flying. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but I do have these birds that are flying around uh, kind of, you know, down here in the wilderness part. And then I also have just little things that I embellished on here to kind of make this better. So, like, here's a little patch of flowers that I added. Here's another patch. So these are just kind of little things to bring the map to life. Otherwise, it's a static image. And I like the idea that I do not necessarily have to have an entire animated file. I mean, sure, it would probably look better, but just adding these little details in here like this, I don't know if it's more or less overhead, but it definitely looks really good. And I even embellished on the, on the uh, you know, added to these other areas here in the map. So, for instance, here's a campfire with some smoke. So that that's really cool. And the, the, like I said, these assets are fairly new. They come with the Fantasy Grounds art subscription. So it's kind of a way to use your assets um, and, and get your bang for your buck out of them. Because it's really nice to have this. I'm really liking the way it's turning out. I mean, this is the pond that, you know, where they'd have it dammed up. And the goblins hang out here, and they're, I think they've tried to flood you out or something like that. But there's the waterfall. And you can see there's little fish in, in the water swimming around. So this is a really neat way to capture the mood. And so you got these little fish swimming around, little minnows. So it's kind of a neat thing. And then I did put the occluder data in here as well. So I'll show you that. It took me about, without having to explain it and, and, you know, go through all this as a tutorial, I think I spent about an hour or more. Now, actually a little less, about 45 minutes. So if I un unlock this, this is all the, the line of sight data. And, you know, if I wanted to make adjustments, I can just click the select button and kind of, you know, pull these things back and forth a little if I need to make any adjustments. But I'm gonna have all this ready for the game. So when, when it comes game time, I'm gonna be ready. You know, I'm not gonna to have to, you know, rush and try to figure all this out right before the game. Cause that's where these kinds of tools can get really frustrating. Cause if you don't have a lot of time and you're trying to do this stuff, it I don't recommend it. It's 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 just gonna piss you off, is really what it's gonna do. So you know, you gotta give yourself a little time to prepare for these if you wanna go the extra mile and provide some of these really nice assets. But essentially, this is just the, the one map out of four for this chapter. So chapter two, I believe, has a ton more maps. But this is just a way that you can um, improve on your um, existing maps, or maybe you want to add to them. This is going to actually replace the map that they provide, because I'm pretty sure that the Wizards of the Coast map is not going to be conducive to virtual tabletop. So I even got like you know, like leaves, and I even added a couple fish to these to these little slow parts in the river. And then here's where the goblin ambushes were the first, well, not the first ambush, but the second one when you guys get to the spoiler alert. But when you get to the this part of the adventure, uh, this is uh, where the where the goblins hang out. So this is just one of of the other maps. I did this one first because this one's the most work. It has the most occluders. It has the most things that you got to deal with uh, in regards to line of sight. So it's it's kind of a cool um, project that I'm working on. It's kind of for myself, but I'm also going to you know present this. If I'm going to charge people, I want to I want it to look pretty good. So this is a uh, just kind of a an idea that you can do. And also up here on top, I just wrote River Cave, and I kind of hit, hit it from the, the title from the player. So this is map, heroic maps, Kragma hideout. You know, I don't want them to see that. I want them to see River Cave. So when I share this out to the group, if I right click and go to sharing and then share it out, what's going to happen is that they're only going to see this title River Cave. And that's important because I don't want them to show that this is a hideout right away. I mean, most people already know, but it's kind of a spoiler if you've never played 
and then your GM shares a map and it says boss lair, I mean, then you're going to know to to gear up or to cast protection spells, you know, kind of metagame. So I kind of like changing the titles a little bit so that it reflects the reality of the players supposedly have never been here before. So it, to me, it would just be like a cave with the river coming out of it. You know, it, it shouldn't be a, the boss hideout unless the little goblin dude, uh, if you capture one of the goblins, unless he tells you about it, but nonetheless river cave, so that's one of the four maps. So the other ones I haven't done anything with yet, but this here, this little P means that it is shared publicly. And when you want to unshare a map, let's say you're completely done with that map, you're going to click on that little P there and that's going to um, unshare it. So that helps free up resources and it doesn't keep sharing that data with your players because even if you're not on that map, it's still still sharing the data. So let's go to, let's just go to, let's see, here's the complete map. So complete is a combined map that is essentially the Tribor Trail and the um, Goblin Ambush map together. So what I did here is I put a link to this map, which is the first ambush map, and I'm just going to put a little bit of terrain on it. it. doesn't require a whole bunch of line of sight, like around where these trees are, and then again, I'm going to put some of those animated effects on there so it looks nicer. And then, of course, I'll put the the horse and, and the goblins and all. You know, once that once the adventure is published, I'll go ahead and start doing that. So this is just an overall map that they provided for the area. So this is the Tribor Trail. So if you pursue uh, the goblins or you're trying to look for their lair, this is the map that you'd use. This one has some traps on it, so. You know, you could probably make some cool little things for that uh, using your assets. And then this last one, of course, is is heading towards the the uh, hideout. So this is just kind of a general map that I'm going to use. I won't share this with the players. This is just for me. And maybe I'll have it linked to some notes or something so they have kind of an overview. So you have three separate maps plus an overview map, which is really cool. I like the idea. Um, and it's kind of neat and you can actually play on this if you want to but I think it's a little big um, being that this thing is really like tall vertically and it's super big I don't think I want to share this with the players you want smaller maps and you know you don't want huge maps because that will slow down things and, and it can cause problems for players that have slower internet so this is just a reference map for me but essentially I brought those imported those maps retitled them so I got map underscore, you know, I put that in there on purpose because I want this to sort in order. So in the order that they're going to appear or close to that, I put these in order. So this is zero, 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 one. So I did that for, so I put map underscore zero, zero, and then the title. And the reason I did that is so that it's easier to find and it sorts by alphanumeric. So this is a really good way to separate things out. Now, if I have other assets like handouts, I would put handout underscore and then whatever it is. So that way, when you're sorting through these um, chapters and such, you have more separation and it's not so overwhelming. Because sometimes you'll have an adventure and every single image and map and everything involved with it is all in one group. And it's no sorting other than title. And if you don't know what the stuff is, it's really annoying to figure out. You have to open up every image to figure out what it is. So do yourself a favor and rename these if you're going to bring in your own content or make your own maps. So that's just part of this. Now, the next thing I'm doing also kind of on the back end or, you know, as part of this is the tokens. So I'm electing to put this gray base underneath the token so here's gundren here's uh there's clark there's some wolves there's sildar there's sildar when he's a prisoner there's a gray wolf there's a yemek he's one of the goblins and then here's the base so this is a semi-transparent base um you can you know you can change the transparency of it this kind of got a transparency to it but what i think i'm going to be doing is kind of going down and probably i should have started with like maybe 80 percent on the on the actual base but that's okay so this helps uh, with contrast on map so if i just put the tokens down with no base on it you can, you're just going to have a really difficult time seeing that on the map so it's nice to have this kind of neutral base underneath 
and you can put a transparency on it like i was saying before like this one i can i can take this and change the transparency to like 80 percent that way when you're when you place these on the map you could still kind of see the contour underneath it but you're also going to be able to tell where the token is because you're you're not going to have the issue of where where you have you know visibility issues and, and i know people are kind of hard of seeing and quite often when you're looking at people playing games online it's very hard to see the tokens especially if it's on like twitch and you got a low quality feed and that sort of thing it's really hard to see that so if you're going to be streaming and you want someone someone to see the details that go into this one of the things you might do is stick a little base underneath these 3d assets or these top-down tokens to give it a little bit more life and a little bit more visibility. Otherwise, this is going to be too hard to see. Even for the players, when unless they zoom all the way in, you know it's hard to see these. So these are just uh, uh, tokens that you're going to get with that set that I was telling you about that, on the DMs Guild. So I actually purchased those a couple days well about a week ago and i was really excited so i was like well you know what i'm gonna use this i'm gonna use all this stuff for my adventure and then i decided you know what i should charge for it because i'm paying for all the all the stuff to to do it so i might as well get paid for it so that's what kind of made me do it normally i'm not so keen on charging people but the amount of investment time money all that stuff i'm like hell yeah i'm gonna charge for it because it's gonna, it's coming out of my pocket. I mean, more so. I'll never recoup my my actual uh, costs. So that's why I'm how I'm justifying it, I guess. But I, I think most of the time, D and D should be free. I mean, if you're just gonna run like a run of the mill adventure and it's not really, you know, set up for for a professional look, you know, then you know probably should be free. But stuff like this. Where you're doing all this prep and all this, you know, all this special stuff. I think it, it does deserve to be compensated once in a while. So, you know, I'm not going to get rich. And I'm not making this a business. So, that's one thing I don't want to do. I know people make a living off it. No, nope, You know, more power to you. But for me, uh, the hobby is first. And if I have to make, you know, money with it, fine. But I don't want to get to the point where I hate running games. And that that's happened to me before where i just get to the point where i don't even want to run a game just because of all the shenanigans that go on and you know it's not any one person's fault it's just something that you'll experience you know in, in your gameplays you'll have people that'll piss you off or you'll piss them off or whatever and then it just kind of ruins the whole it ruins the whole environment is what really what i'm trying to say so that's this is that was goblin four and now I'm here, this is what, Goblin 3. So I'm just gonna drag him over here and resize the token. And what I have here, this square is actually 256 by 256. Now the new requirements for Fantasy Grounds or the suggestions is if you have a PNG file, you still follow the old way, which is basically um, to use sizes like 100 um, pixels for small to medium, 200 for large, and then 300 for anything larger or huge. But if you're going to convert these or use these as WebP or WebM files, if you convert these, they're a lot smaller. So they say on those to use for small or medium, use 256 uh, pixels per inch and then the larger you can use 512 so that's because of the file size difference I mean honestly in most cases I've noticed that the compression ratio and the quality for that is really good so if you tick like this file for instance it's like almost a megabyte or half a megabyte um, once you export it so you imagine you have 50 tokens you know that it starts adding up so Basically, um, when I converted these down, they'll be like a quarter of that. So you can really save a lot of room and space if you're willing to take that extra step and convert them into uh, uh, WebP with transparency, because that's that's what I'm going to do here. I got to make sure all these are exported as a transparency, so it doesn't pick up this white stuff on the edge, and then. Um, 
once I'm done, I'm going to take all of these and batch convert them as WebM files or WebP files. And that'll make them, you know, two thirds smaller than what they are now. So this is Goblin 3. I got to remember. And another thing that's important here is I'm labeling them because that that saves me so much work uh, in the back end. So when you have these kinds of files, especially if you've got big collections, it really helps to take the time to, to relabel these. I, I don't know how many times I got to say that, but that's so, I mean, when I first started with Fantasy Grounds, I didn't do any of that. And I just thought, oh, what's a waste of time? I don't have time for that. But now that, you know, time has gone on, I wish I would have because it, there's so much crap that I have to deal with uh, for, you know, my own doing, of course. But just take it for me. It's definitely worth the effort in the long run. Short term, no. Uh, long term, yes. So the short term kind of sucks because you're fighting with time. And that's, you know, generally what most of us, the biggest problem or the biggest obstacle is time. But essentially, um, I'm using Canva, a paid version. And what this is, is just a way to kind of make social media and, and that sort of thing. It's not really a an art program. I mean, you can put things together, but there isn't a lot of drawing like you'd get out of Adobe. But for something like this, it's really, really useful. So that's Goblin Soldier 2. I guess I will l label these accordingly because I don't want to get... Because Goblin 2 isn't going to be very helpful. But Goblin Soldier 2 is. Because Goblin 2 could be 50 million different goblins in your collection. So I think adding that soldier in there is the way to go. Let's see. I want to look at that see what it says. Yeah, Goblin Soldier. So that's important for this naming convention because you're going to run into problems if you don't. And then what I'm doing is duplicating. So all I have to do technically is just delete the token change the title and drag over the next one. So let's see what this one is. We have that one. So this is the red one. That's okay. So there's another, this one has a shield. And what I've been doing with smaller tokens or ones that like little guys like this, I haven't been doing it like going the full length or the full width. I've been taking these, even though they're kind of already scaled, I've been kind of scaling them for myself. So whatever I think it should look like. So this isn't quite expanded all the way to the edge. It's just kind of shrunk down a little smaller. And that way, when, they, when they're on the map, when you put them down, they're not as big as a human, you know, so don't, they're not quite as big. Unless that's their size, of course. But in this case, they're kind of small, so, or at least a little smaller. So this is what? Which, which soldier is this? So this is soldier one. Okay. So Goblin Soldier 1. And this is kind of a the you know best practices kind of thing. You can do this however you want, but I think this is a really a lot faster doing it this way than trying to do each individual token. Because then when I get done with these, I can export them out all as one continuous thing and not just a huge, you know, doing one little thing at a time. That would probably drive me nuts. So this is what? This is Goblin Soldier. So this is just a Goblin Soldier. No no title. So I will fix that in a minute. So we want to go to 250 and then center it. And then this is just Goblin Soldier. So this doesn't have any sort of appendix on it or anything. Or, or what's this one? Oops, need to do that. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Uh, duplicate page. I'm going to delete this one and drag this guy over. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so 256 or 250 actually. Okay, and center it. And it's probably Goblin Archer, but we'll see. Okay, so file name, Goblin Archer. Yep, 
That's right. So we'll change that. Okay, so there's some, I'm having a little bit of uh, difficulties. So uh, when it comes to some tokens, so I'm not going to do any more tokens here. These aren't even part of that, but this is all the tokens that are for chapter one. And then I have one, two, three, four, five larger ones that I need to do. So I'm going to export these as a collection and then i'm going to do the larger ones but i have a bigger base i gotta have a, a little bit bigger um, base here so what i'm going to do is take this and um, when i go here i can i can download it but then transparent background and it says png um, they don't i don't think they support yeah they don't support the web m web p so i'm gonna have to do that later but I'm going to go ahead and download all those. So those are ready to go. And then what I'm going to do is make a copy of this um, or make a whole new thing and then do all the larger tokens with that. So that is complete. Okay, so we'll not worry about that right now. And then we're going to create a new design and custom size. And this one's going to be 512 by 512 so you won't be able to tell really uh, any difference other than the fact that it's you know it's gonna be a larger token and then what we're going to do is go back to my tokens folder and let's see what we got here so I want to drag this over first this is our base and then I'm going to take and let's see there's a base and then go up to the larger tokens and scale those. So this is the, the wagon, right? So I'm going to want to put this guy probably almost out to the edge. Yeah. I want to get most of this, but then I got to remember what I scaled this at. Otherwise it's going to look weird. So that could be, I don't know if I, I like that or not, but I'll go right out to the edge. That should, that should help that and then center it of course well where is center huh okay there's center there i guess there isn't a center huh well anyways that's that's going to be the wagon so what i could do now is of course i want to fix that base right now because i i made that mistake last time so i'm going to go down to um 80 percent and then what I might do is add some, like you can add some like grass or bushes or something like that, whatever you want. So I, I'm not going to do that, but you could. So that's something you, you can take a look at. Let me see if I can scale this a little bigger. So I want to go to, let's say 280. Yeah, there we go. So I got to remember that 280. I started at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to go and duplicate this, but before I do, I want to call this something. So I want to say um, uh, large. So I'm just saying lost mine of Fandelver tokens large. That way I can, you know, keep track of what I'm doing here. So this is um, empty wagon. So these are going to be assets, but you can also make them tokens. I'll just say empty wagon. So if you want to move them around on a map, you're going to have to make them a token. In other words, you have to store those in the token area. And then if you want to, let me see, hold on a sec here. So this is... We said 280. So let's see what we got here. So that's not quite. Yeah, that's actually right. So we're going to take this one off and put this one on, and I'll just recenter it. There we go. So this is a full wagon. So wagon full, I guess, or. So this one has stuff in it. 
And then again, I'm going to copy this and bring over the one. Now this one has a driver, so I don't know if that appeals to you, but this one will actually have a driver. Um, we'll see how it looks. Let's see, where are we at on that, on the scale? So 280 is what, yeah, here we go. 280, right there. Okay, so that's the only difference is this one has a driver. So we'll have that one, and we'll say wagon full, or wagon driver. Okay, and then the next ones are going to be the dead horses. So I'm going to make that, and, oops, there's a dead horse. So we want to make sure that one's going to probably be, See, that looks a little huge, so I might kind of back off a little bit because it shouldn't be bigger than the wagon. Let's take a look at that scale-wise. Okay, so, yeah, I don't think it should be that big. So let's see what, what we got here. Because you compare that to one of the ox, I mean, it's pretty big. I mean, you can always kind of rescale it in Fantasy Grounds once you put it down, but... I kind of want it close. I don't have to do a bunch of that. So let's see where we're at in, in this. Okay, so let's go with 400, I think, is the, the ticket. Nah, let's go with 450. Actually, 425. Wait, what's half of 512? Okay, so we'll go four. 425. It looks pretty close. It's pretty big still, though. I think 400 was better. Actually, 512, so 406. All right, so 406, that, that should do it. So this is the first horse, one of the dead horses that you find. But see, that... The reason it looks off is because the other ones are smaller, actually, so it, it's confusing. But this will look good once it's, you know, once I got it set. But I think 412 is the way to go. And you really have to think about these in terms of scale and such. And if I have to scale a little bit in the game, that's fine. But you don't want to be doing that the whole game, so... So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to bring over the other horse. And I'm going to scale it the same size as this one. Yeah, there we go. We got some reference there. So do that, take that out, put this in there. So these are the dead horses that you come across in, we want 412. There we go. Yeah, so these are the dead horses that you come across in the adventure. So there's that. So this design is the larger ones, and we did that with the larger token. So if you got a token that's a giant or something, you might have to create a different template for it. But nonetheless, this is the horses, and we got that set. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. Same thing, download transparent background because I don't want all that white stuff in the background there and go ahead and hit download so that's basically the conversion work for the token so it's a little extra work but putting that base on there is going to make a big difference when it comes to gameplay and visibility it looks kind of goofy now because we're zoomed all the way in but once you get it on the maps and stuff it'll look really decent all right so I'm going to close that and that. And like I said, these are the tokens that I'm getting from Devon Knight. These ones down here were made by, um, these ones were made by uh, Bernardo Hasselman. But I got this base actually from Digital Dave. So Digital Dave actually, um, he, he made this, uh, or had it made so that he can use it in his game. So you see it has like a transparency around it and he actually gave this to me a long time ago i said hey dave i saw him doing a show one time i was like what how'd you how are you doing that and he's like oh i just have my own 
my own little base and I just take the extra time and put them on there. I was like, oh, I thought they came that way. He's like, oh, no, you got to put those on. I'm like, oh, shit. So that's a lot of work. But, you know, it's it's kind of worth it. It's going to be for a good cause. So, so now that I have that done, then I got to take those and convert them into – oh, here's the PDFs, by the way, for the heroic maps. So this is the – the content you're going to get if you buy that pack plus those tokens that I was just working on. So this is the bundle and like, here's all the, the different maps. So I got to find out where those downloaded to hopefully not here. Nope. Okay. So here's the, t the two things here, the two bundles. So I'm going to take those and put them in the folder. Very important to kind of keep everything organized, keep it together. And now I have a folder here, but what I'm going to do is make a new folder. And this is going to be, um, we'll say Lost Mine of Fandelver underscore chapter. Because this is the folder that I'm actually going to put in Fantasy Grounds. Zero one underscore TKNS for tokens. So that way I have a, you know, a decent starting point. And I'm going to put these guys in here and then I'm going to extract them. So extract all and then I'm going to actually call, I'm going to rename this, but right now I'm just going to extract it, extract all. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is retitle this to medium so l m o p tokens medium and that way i kind of just have a little separation there and let's just get rid of those i don't need that anymore so i got a little separation in there and there's the base just in case i need that and then i have those there so those are all the tokens now the tricky part is going to be to convert these so i'm going to use gimp so i'm going to take gimp and bring that up and use the batch conversion um, tool there's a plugin that i got for it that will take the files and convert them all into whatever format you want so this is the gimp uh, free photo editing software so I'm going to take this file and let's see, there's a thing called batch manipulation. So this is from a, um, a plugin. This isn't natively a part of it, but anyhow, so I'm going to do the batch conversion and I'm going to add the images, but I'm going to add folders. So I'm going to go and navigate in my hard drive where those folders are. So that's the hard part is remembering where you put everything and then downloads. And then I think I put it in the, let's see, lost mine, heroic maps. And then I have a chapter one tokens. So, but I want to actually do these two Okay, so here's all the files at once, okay? So this is going to take these and convert them over um, into to whatever. And I see a problem here already with file names, but I'll fix that after it's converted. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Add. So we're going to manipulate these. We don't want to resize. We don't want to crop. We don't want to do anything. You can add a watermark. We're going to change the format and compression. So right now it's set to JPEG. Uh, I'm going to set this actually to WebP. And the image quality is going to be about 75%. This is the, the recommendation from, from, the, uh, from Smiteworks. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. But before I do that, I actually want to keep the folder hierarchy. There we go. Okay, so now let's do that again. So change the format and compression, change it to WebP, change the image quality to 75, and then hit OK. 
Is there, what's the default? Oh, I don't care about that. Okay, hit okay. So then you hit apply and it's gonna go through and auto convert those all over into WebP assets. So hopefully I don't get any errors because last time I did a batch convert, a couple of them errored out and I have to go back and fix them. So we'll see what happens. But once it's done converting, we'll take a look at that. And I got to rename one of the files. I screwed that up. So one of the wagon drivers needs to be, um, there's full empty and then there's one with a driver and that sort of thing. So we'll see. So once you're done and there's zero errors, I'm going to hit close. Okay, so that's how you convert the, the maps, or in, in this case, it's better to do smaller files, I think, with the batch process, but let's see how they turned out. So, wow, where did they go? Okay, so I think they went to, yeah, here's the other stuff that I, let's go to pictures. Huh. Where did they go? Where did I tell them to go? That's the question. Let's see. So if I do this, I can now I got to remember where I put them. So I know it's in my main hard drive. Let's see. So, oh, I see. I forgot. So users something rather. Uh, okay. So users. Huh, okay. Okay, I see. All right, so got it. Okay, so users, okay. All right, so there they go. So we'll go and give, grab those. Okay, so users that and here they go one two so i cut those yeah you gotta watch out <laughs> i didn't tell it where i wanted them to go so that's why i did that all right so this is the bundle and i want to go back here and paste those in but i don't want these and voila okay let's see what we got Yep, so these are all WebP now. So the, one of these, uh, yeah, these are not wagons. So this is Dead Horse 1. And this is important that you do this because when you start importing this crap, you're going to, yeah, you're going to find out. It's going to suck. So you want this to be flawless if you can so dead horse beating a dead horse here but that um definitely needs to uh be addressed when you're doing this because if you don't manage your files now when you put them in fantasy grounds and you decide you want to change something it's going to mess up a bunch of stuff all right so it looks good they all turned out okay so what we're going to do is take these two folders now these are going to be tokens and hit this copy over here. And then when you go to Fantasy Grounds, you have to kind of decide where you want to put them. I want these to be a part of the campaign, but you can put them on the top level or the main campaign folder or the main Fantasy Grounds folder if you want. But I'm going to go to Assets. And then get rid of that filter. And then click Tokens. And if I go to Data... I can place them on my cut in my custom folder, so it'll be accessible for no matter what um, what game I'm in. But in this case, I'm going to make a module out of this, so I'm going to go back down. I'm going to go to folder, and this is actually a subfolder now within the campaign, not at the top level like the data folder. And I'm going to hit Control V, and that's going to put those in there. Okay, so now that I have those in there. I'll go ahead and close that. You have to hit the refresh folders on the bottom. And then now you have a folder called campaign, which is the campaign tokens for this game. So this is the, it looked like they turned out pretty good. Yeah. 
And then what I'm going to do next is kind of different. So I'm going to go to images, campaign, folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this in like I did before. I don't need the medium ones, but I'm going to leave the large ones because I want them to be assets. So what I'm going to do is say lost mine of Fandelver. And kind of keep the same chapter one assets. And the reason I put them in two places is because one, if I want to build an image with just a static image, I don't necessarily want to use those other things, but these also have the bases on them. So I'm going to have to rethink that. So I'm actually not going to use that right now. So I'm going to go back and probably just add them as a standard image because I just remember that I put bases on them. So that's not going to be helpful. But nonetheless, that's what I would have done uh, if I had done that right. But I got to go back and redo them without the bases. So not a big deal if I went back to Canva, re-export them, remove that base off the bottom. No big deal. Same, same issue, it's different stuff, and then convert them. All right, so that is that. So now that we've done that, we've got all of chapter one kind of captured. I just have a little bit of line of sight to do, but that's it. But let's take a look at the tokens, see what they look like. So what I wanna do is, what do I have open here? So I don't have much open, but I do have some pregens. So what I will do is just add the cleric soldier and then that will be my test token. And if I go to characters, now it's basically here. And then I can add token if I want. So we'll just pick a dwarven one just for the heck of it. So this always takes about half a minute or whatever because if you have a lot of portraits and tokens it it really taxes the it's got to cash through and search through all those things that you have so this is a dwarf we'll just use that as my token and what we'll do is i'll put this on the combat tracker and this is how you test your maps so put this guy here and take this one off so i don't get confused and let's see what it looks like on the map. So I'm gonna bring up the Lost Mine of Fandover map that I put the line of sight on, the, uh, what was that, the uh, Kragma hideout. So go over to images. I'm gonna pull up this Kragma hideout. And you need to enable, if you haven't already, you need to enable line of sight and the lighting. So you can see it's starting to get dark. And it's going to be almost completely black uh, if you don't have a light source or or dark vision. So that's that's by design. This area is also masked off so that when the players come up here, they don't see all this, and the light from outside also doesn't go inside. So you got to mask that off in two different ways. So this has got the line of sight on it, but it also has another mask to prevent light from penetrating inside from the outside. So it has ambient light outside. So let's go ahead and uh, drop this guy on here and see what it looks like. So here's the token. All right, so when you don't have a token by default, it essentially just gives you this, this standard one. So that'll give you the portrait will be your will be your default token. However, the game master, um, not the player, but the game master can opt to use the top-down token. So let's do that. So I'm going to go click that, close that, and what I'm going to do is bring this up again, the character sheet, and instead of using just the um, regular token for it, what I'm going to do is drag over the token that I made with the base on it over to the right-hand side. So if I go to my assets, and then go to tokens and then campaign. This should have the dwarven ones. So 
This is the, I'm just going to use uh, Gundren's just for now. But I want to see what it looks like on the map. See how that base turned out. So I'm going to drag and drop that on there. And now that is the new token. Oops, I drug over the wrong one. Okay, so players cannot do that. It's just the DMs I can. So now that I have that on there, if you remove this guy and put this guy back on here, now it's going to show that default, your new default token. So this is the token now. So now that I take this out and I'm going to drag and drop it, there we go. So it looks pretty good. It kind of stands out from the rest of it. And if you claim a token and you move this around, it's going to show that line of sight. It looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. And being that he's a dwarf, he can see inside here because he's got dark vision. So that's why he's able to see inside the cavern. So it looks really good. I'm really happy with that. And this is what you want. So if you're able to put the time in, do it. So this doesn't prevent him from moving up here, but this is a bridge that's actually crossed over the top here. So you'll have to figure out how to do that. But what I thought about is putting uh, some glass so they can still see, but then opening and closing the glass door so that when they come through here, if they try to go up and climb up and go into these caverns they can't so you could put like a glass wall there essentially uh between these two points and then when they actually get over here you can open them up they're just windows essentially but when when they're looking at this uh from the ground it looks like they can go in here but they really they can't so you put a glass wall in here so let me unlock this go to the line of sight so yeah i could put like a glass like a window right here and that'll prevent them from moving across there. So I might do that now. So I'll just go to the window and just use these points as my my reference points. What's going on here? Oh yeah, I want to clean that up. So take this point, delete that. Take this point, delete that. Okay, now it's clean. All right, so I'm just going to take a... It's going to kind of look ugly, but it's going to work functionally. So I'll take the line tool... And I'm just going to connect these two points. And then I'll connect here and here and here and there. So that's going to be the glass, basically a glass door. And when they get up here, you know, they'll have to ask to move across. So no big deal. So this is, keeps them from moving their token up through here. So that's why I'm doing that. So again, I'm just going to this, that. There's probably a better way to do it, but I think this will work for what we're doing here. So now when we go back to play mode, I just have to open those up when they go across uh, the bridge. So that, that was a good find. So this is what I mean when you want to tech your work is, you know, you want to be able to, so you can't move through there without, without asking. So I can just open that up. No big deal. Yep. Very cool. Players won't be able to see that anyways. So they won't notice it too much. All right. So that's good. All right. So anyways, that's all I got for today. I think I rambled enough. Uh, hopefully you guys were inspired to do your own stuff. Uh, again, I'm going to be doing these occasionally, doing the prep show. Uh, just basically taking the um, existing assets that I purchased off the DMs Guild and putting them into this, uh, into this adventure. And I made myself a story entry here. And then if, you, if I come down here, I got another... Chapter one, what do you know? And then here's the index and the content. So I have this stuff kind of more or less set up like the like the PDF. And when I'm done, I'm going to take this and put it in the reference manual. But right now I'm building out the content. So I'm actually going to build the story entries for it and everything else that goes with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this and export it all as a one module with all four chapters in it. But right now I'm just working on chapter one. So that's the main thing. 
is that it's that. And so this is basically off the DMs Guild. So this is the links for this will be in the description at the end of the video. And I did another video that has the same stuff in it. And this is going to um, so DMs Guild. And I don't know if it's still on sale. That's what I'm checking. So if I go to the DMs Guild and... <clears throat> Probably easiest if I just go to my library instead of trying to look it up again. So I go to the library and I'm going to load that up and see where the link is for this. And view all products. Okay. So what this is, is these are all the files that are in that collection. So this is the resource pack, but it comes in different... Um, chapters if you want to buy it separately but what i'm doing now is i'm going to just go find out where that collection went so this is just chapter one but there is a collection file yeah here's the bundle yeah it's still on sale so i don't know what the price is anymore because i already purchased it but it was 24.99 so it was 37 dollars. so that's pretty good so you get four chapters you get all the maps, all updated maps, and then you get the tokens too. So you get the Devonite tokens, you get the full JPEGs, and there's also VTT versions. So those are at 70 per pixel uh, instead of 140 because the other ones are made for Roll20 and Foundry. So those are at 140. The average for Fantasy Grounds is 100 pixels per square. And this one is 70 per square, which is a good compromise, and it still keeps the quality up. So pretty cool. So anyways, that's where I got that. I'll go ahead and put that in the uh, – uh, that's in the description at the um, end of the video. Or I can just kind of paste it right here for now. And basically, that's that's 